Hello guys, welcome back to today. We're going to be looking at angel goalie tandems and today I'm going to be ranking them 1 through 31. Now of course, a goalie tandem is a pair of goalies on an NHL team, so for me, when I look at this list, it has to be two goalies usually that are good and really I do reward teams that have two solid goaltenders in net. But yes, I'm going to go through every single NHL team's goalie tandems and ranking them, so this is likely to be a long video, so I suggest some popcorn, sit back, and relax. We're going to start off the list at number 31, and I have the New York Islanders, and when I was making this list, this was the obvious choice for me. You have Thomas Grice and Robin Leonard in net going into next season. Last season, uh, Grice played 27 games, had 3.82 goals against average, a .892 save percentage, while Leno with the Buffalo Sabres had, a, had 53 games played, uh, uh, three points, oh, one goal against average, and a point nine oh eight Sabres edge. And I, I really have no faith in either of those two goaltenders. I kind of hate both of them too. So when you put them both on a team, I really don't have any faith at all for them going forward. At number 30, I have the Carolina Hurricanes with Scott Darling and Peter Mrazek. Uh, Scott Darling put up 43 games played last season at a 3.18 goals against average with an ugly 8.88 save percentage, while Peter Mrazek played 39 games had a 3.3 goals against average with a .902 save percentage. Only one of those guys above 900 save percentage. That's obviously awful, but both guys could bounce back next season. But what we've seen from them, they're both really question marks, and I don't see them improving that much next season. At number 29, I have the Ottawa Senators I, I, with them having Craig Anderson and Mike Condon. I know it's a little bit harsh putting this down on the list, but from what I saw last season, it really was not the greatest. Uh, Anderson put up 3.32 goals against average with a .898 save percentage, while Condon put up a 3.25 goals against average with a .902 save percentage. Pretty much the same situation as Carolina, uh, not with the youth in the goaltending system, but with, with Craig Anderson, it, it's just not looking great for him. Of course, he yeah, had that Eastern Conference final run, but this past season, it was just terrible. I don't know if he'll improve that much, but I could see a rebounding season. I just don't have a lot of faith in either or goaltender right now. For the Ottawa Senators, it isn't looking too great. At number 28, I have the Philadelphia Flyers with Brian Elliott and Michael Neuberth. Well, Elliott had an okay season. He put up 266 goals against average with a point and 909 save percentage, while Neuberth put up a 2.60 goals against average with a point 915 save percentage. And to me, while they did have decent stats, I feel like that Philadelphia defense was kind of uh, inflating those stats a little bit. They were a pretty decent squad, and I feel like both of those goaltenders are, again, question marks. Is Brian Elliott really going to improve at his age? Is Michael Neuver going to continue some solid play there? It really is going to be interesting to see how Philadelphia improves in the goaltending situation, but right now, I just don't have a lot of faith in them either. At number 27, I have the Detroit Red Wings. They have Jimmy Howard and Jonathan Bernier. Howard put up a 2.85 goals against average with a .910 save percentage last season, while Bernier put up a 2.85 goals against average with a .913 save percentage. Bernier with Colorado Avalanche came to Detroit settlement for a free agency. Uh, I don't think Bernier is going to be as good as he was last season. He was very, very solid for the Colorado Avalanche, one of the main reasons why they got into the playoffs. I don't see the same thing happening behind that Detroit's defense. And with Jimmy Howard, there has always been a health issue, but I think he'll still be solid around that same level that he put up last season, but I don't really see improvement at all, which for them going into the future is not going to be very good for them. At number 26, I have the Vancouver Canucks. They got Jacob Markstrom and Anders Nilsson. They've had that pairing for a little while now. Uh, Markstrom put up a 2.71 goals against average and a point nine at 12 save percentage throughout the year, while Nilsson put up a 3.44 goals against average with a point nine oh one save percentage. And to me, this pairing is just incredibly meh. I don't see improvement from them at all. Maybe Nelson gets a little bit better, but to me, this pairing isn't really going to get it too much better. They're just average, and I don't think that they're going to really push the limit of Vancouver. For Vancouver, they really got to bet on Demko becoming the next best thing. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck with pretty average goaltending, which on my list is not going to get you too far. At number 25, I have the Buffalo Sabres with Carter Hutton and Elias Olmark. Hutton had a good season with the St. Louis Blues last season. I think he played like three games, had a 2.09 goals against average point. 931 save percentage, while Olmark in the AHL had a 922 save percentage. Well, I feel like this pairing has potential. I, if there's any pairing that has more questions than this, you guys better tell me, because this pairing has so many questions going on next season. Can Carter Hutton really replicate that season that he had in St. Louis, and can he become a full starter? Can Elias Olmark be a reliable backup and actually convert the great play from the AHL onto the NHL? To me, this pairing has potential, but to me right now, we just haven't seen enough of them to really gauge how good they are. 
At number 24, I have the Florida Panthers with Bruno Luongo and James Reimer. Luongo had a good season last season, wasn't really healthy. I think he played 30 games, had a 2.4 7 goals against average with a point nine twenty nine save percentage. A great season from him, while Reimer had a 2.99 goals against average with a point nine thirteen save percentage. To me, there is question marks with this pairing as well, especially with Roberto Luongo. He's getting up there in age especially, and I don't know how long he will really produce at the rate that he did last season. Of course, the health and injuries are already starting to catch up to him. With James Reimer, he's a solid backup, I'd say, but he's really a average starter at best. I feel like Game Reimer can't really push that good status that we've seen from him before. And I feel like for the Florida Panthers, they're going to have average goaltending at, at best because I think that Luongo is going to be injured half the time and Reimer isn't going to be that great of a goalie. At number 23, I have the Colorado Avalanche. They got Semyon Varlamov and Philip Grubauer. And again, more question marks. I really do not know how the Colorado Avalanche goaltending is going to factor in next season. Varlamov hasn't been the healthiest goaltender in the world last couple of years. And while he did when he did play, he was decent. He wasn't great. So I feel like he will improve next season as well. But with Philip Grubauer, he had a good season with Washington, but was the backup. He's never really been the full starter for Washington until that second half of the season for them. For me, there is question marks with this team, with the goaltending. Will they stay healthy? Will Philip Grubauer actually be a starter? And of course, who actually gets the starter job? Job, there could be a bit of a fight for that position, which could hurt them in the long run. At number 22, I have the St. Louis Blues with Jake Allen and Chan Johnson. Jake Allen had one of his worst years of his career with a 2.75 goals against average and a .906 save percentage last season. Johnson, again, the same kind of situation. He had a 3.55 goals against average with .891 save percentage. And again, there is more questions with this goaltending pairing. Will Jake Allen actually bounce back? I feel like he has that potential, but who really knows at this point? And Chad Johnson was absolutely abysmal last season. There's no really defending him. He was just terrible. So if he can bounce back to St. Louis, that's good. But honestly, I don't have too much faith in that happening either. At number 21, I have the Edmonton Oilers with Cam Talbot and Miko Koskinen. Talbot had a pretty mess season, a 3.02 goals against average, with .908 save percentage, while Koskinen in the KHL was very good last season with a 1.57 goals against average, with .937 save percentage. While uh, Cam Talbot had that mess season, I do see him rebounding, I do see him being a much better goaltender next season with Edmonton Oilers, while there is a question mark with Miko Koskinen. I think it's been like eight years since he's played in the NHL, something crazy like that, but he has been great in the KHL, so that transition might be decent, but again, there's question marks on if he can actually transition. Uh, again, they've had questions and problems in the backup position quite a while for the Edmonton Oilers. Hopefully that gets fixed and hopefully we see Cam Talbot also rebound. At number 20, I have the New York Rangers, of course, with Henrik Lundqvist and Alexander Georgiev. Now, this, I don't think there's that many questions with this pairing, but I feel like there's not really too much potential with this pairing besides Georgiev. Uh, Lundqvist had a 2.98 goals against average with a .915 save percentage, while Georgiev in 10 games last season was very impressive with a 3.5, 15 goals against average, but a .918 save percentage. With Paul and Henrik Lundqvist, he had a good season last season, but the defense wasn't very great around him. I feel like he'll still be around the same production next season. He is still King Henrik, but for Alexander Georgiev, it's going to be really interesting to see how he develops in that backup role. I think he will get that opportunity, and I feel like for the New York Rangers, he's a solid young backup for the future, even, even a starter if all things go right. I feel like there's some potential there with Georgiev transitioning after Ken Henrik retires, after he's done with, but right now, it's a solid pairing. At number 19, I have the Chicago Blackhawks with Corey Crawford and Cam Ward. Corey Crawford played, I think, like 30 games last season. He had a 2.27 goal against average with a .929 save percentage, while Ward had a 2.73 goals against average with a .906 save percentage. Now, again, there's question marks. Will Corey Crawford be ready for the start of the season? Will he be ready for training camp even? And I feel like there's definite questions on if his health will be there for the start of the season. While Cam Ward is a decent backup, I think he's just that. If he's reliable, upon to be that starter, I think that Chicago is going to be in a tough spot there. I don't think he's starter material, but I think as a backup, it could work. But with Corey Crawford's health, there really is a lot of questions going into next season. At number 18, I have the Arizona Coyotes with Antti Ranta and Darcy Kemper. Ranta was a fantastic goaltender, but had some health issues. He played about 40 games last season, had a 2.24 goals against average, 0.930 save percentage, while Darcy Kemper had a 2.52 goals against average and a 0.920 save percentage. Ranta was fantastic 
fantastic in about 40 games last season, but again, he had some injuries during the season. If he can stay healthy next season, we'll see him be in the upper echelon goaltenders as he's proven himself, but I need to see more games from him at that elite level before I put him at the elite level of goaltenders. Walter Rizzi Kemper was fantastic with the LA Kings. He was kind of meh after he was traded with the Arizona Coyotes last season. He still will be a decent backup for them, but right now there is some question marks with the team. I'm hoping that Antti Ranta can take the next steps next season as I think the Arizona Coyotes will likely make the playoffs. At number 17, I have the Calgary Flames with Mike Smith and John Gillies. Mike Smith had a 2.65 goal against average and a .916 save percentage last season, while Gillies had limited games but put up 2.88 goals against average with a .896 save percentage. With Mike Smith, he's getting up there in age. I mean, he's like 36 or something. So there, I still think he will be decent next season, but there is question marks on his long-term uh, potential with the Calgary Flames. With John Gillies, he's supposed to be their next goaltender of the future. He didn't really impress that much last season, and we're hoping that he can take the next step next season if Mike Smith were to get lesser games. I think that this pairing is going to be decent, but again, there is age concerns with Mike Smith, and there is concerns about John Gillies converting to the NHL level. At number 16, I have the Minnesota Wild with Devin Dubnik and Alex Stalock. Dubnik had a 2.52 goals against average with a .918 save percentage last season, while Stalock had a 2.85 goals against average with a .910 save percentage last season. And the big thing that they're probably not higher on is Alex Stalock. Sure, he had a 9 and 10 save percentage last season, but I do not see that sustaining at all. I see him dropping back down to likely a 900-ish save percentage. I don't see him being as good as he was last season. He was very, very solid in that backup position, but I don't see that transitioning into next season as well. I feel like Devin Dubnik is still a very solid goaltender. He might drop a little bit in that save percentage, but I still think he's a very solid and serviceable goalie. At number 15, I have the Winnipeg Jets with Connor Hellebuck and Laurette Boissois. Now, Connor Hellebuck had a breakout season last season with the Winnipeg Jets, playing 67 games, having a 2.36 goals against average, a .924 save percentage. Boissois was terrible for the Edmonton Oilers, having a 14 games played, 324 goals against average, with a .883 save percentage. Absolutely abysmal in that backup position behind Cam Talbot. Uh, for me, there's definite question marks next season. I don't see Connor Hellebuck being nearly as good next season as I said in my bold predictions video. I don't think he's going to be as good next season, and for Laurent Rossois, he has obviously not shown that he's an NHL goaltender, so for Winnipeg making that risk and taking the risk on Rossois, it's going to be interesting to see how that works out, but I don't have too much faith in it actually working out. At number 14, I have the Boston Bruins with Tuga Rask and Yaroslav Halak. Uh, Rask played 54 games last season at a 2.36 goals in average of a .917 save percentage, while Halak played four, 54 games as well, having a 3.19 goals against average and a .908 save percentage. And I think this goaltending tandem, I think Tuga Rask will obviously be the much better goaltender, but I don't have a lot of faith in Halak. While he did put up decent stats behind a meh and New York Islanders defense at best, I feel like he was part of the problem there in New York and allowing so many goals. He did put up decent stats, but he would allow so many weak goals. It was kind of crazy. Uh, for Tuka Rask, I think he's going to be fair for a good next season as well. Not elite numbers, but he's going to be around what he was in that last season with a 917. I think that's what he's going to be next season. At number 13, I have the Los Angeles Kings with Jonathan Quick and Peter Budai. Now, this tandem is would be a lot higher if they had an actual backup in net. Jonathan Quick is an amazing goaltender and one of the best in the league, in my opinion. He put up 2.40 goals against average and a point and 921 save percentage last season. But with Budai, there's just so many questions with that with that pairing. Uh, three six, 76 goals on average with a .876 save percentage. And that was behind a Tampa Bay defense that is pretty, pretty solid. So I really don't see why Peter Budai is going to work out. He was decent with the LA Kings before that, but even then, I don't think it's going to work out too well for them. Peter Budai is looking at one of the worst backups in the league right now. Even though he had that decent season a couple of seasons ago, I don't see it working out. And that golden pairing being dropped down because of Budai in net. At number 12, I have the New Jersey Devils with Corey Schneider and Keith Kincaid. Schneider last season had a mess season for his standards, putting up a 2 points, 9 3 goals against average for point nine oh seven save percentage, while Keith Kincaid kind of stole the starter job for New Jersey for a little bit there, having a 2.77 goals against average for point nine thirteen save percentage. I see these stats flipped next season with the New Jersey Devils. I see Keith Kincaid having a lesser season than he did last season, while Corey Schneider being much better next season. I still think it'll be a very solid goalie tandem where either goal Tender could be the starter there, but both of them are very solid goaltenders. I see that transitioning into next season as New Jersey is likely a good team as well. At number 11, I have the Montreal Canadiens. Now, I really had no idea where to put this tandem on the list because 
Of course, you got Carey Price and you got Antti Niemi. Carey Price having a 3-11 goal against average last season with a 900 save percentage, while Antti Niemi having a 3-12 goals against average and a point eleven or point nine eleven save percentage was really fantastic in his limited time there in Montreal, where Carey Price was the exact opposite last season. It seemed like he was just not the Carey Price that we've been come we've been accustomed to in the last few years. I feel like Carey Price will likely have a much better season next season, but for Antti Niemi, I really have no idea where he's going to be, how he's going to play. He could still transition that plan to Montreal next season, but I see him lowering down just a little bit at least. I see him being a okay backup, but not on the best. For Carey Price, I think this tandem will raise in the next couple of years just because I think Carey Price will be much better. At number 10, I have the Vegas Golden Knights, of course, with Mark andre Fleury and Malcolm Subban heading into next season. Fleury was absolutely amazing, having a career year in Vegas last season with a 2.24 goals in average, a point at 9.27 save percentage, and was pretty much godly in the playoffs up until the Stanley Cup Final. Subban was very solid, too, when he played, having a 2.68 goals in average from a point at 10 save percentage, 9.10 save percentage. And for Mark andre Fleury, I see that lowering just a little bit. I still see him being one of the better goaltenders in the league for sure, though. But I also see Malcolm Subban being very, very good next season, getting a little bit more games as well, and also him bringing on those chances and being a little bit better. I still don't see this goaltender tandem right around this spot next year to where the Malcolm Subban probably gets better. Flurry drops a little bit, but they're still a very solid tandem nonetheless. At number nine, I have the Washington Capitals with Braden Holpe and Phoenix Copley. Uh, Holpe putting up a 2.99 goals against average with a point nine or a point nine oh seven save percentage, while Copley in the AHL put up a 2.91 goals against average with a point eight nine six save percentage. Of course, Holpe having that amazing playoffs and being a Stanley Cup champion, you got to raise him because of that. But I was not impressed at all from his regular season. It just seemed like almost every single Washington game I saw from him, he was just kind of lackluster. While defense wasn't the greatest, it just was not the greatest performances from him either. And Phoenix Copley, he's barely played in the NHL. I think he's played two games in the St. Louis Blues. And for Washington, they're banking on a guy who didn't even have a, a good season at all in the NHL, not even above a 900 save percentage, to be their backup. So it's really going to be interesting to see how this pairing goes forward. I feel hope he will be fair for a good next season, but I do not like them banking on a guy who has barely played NHL, barely any NHL games and has been pretty meh in the NHL too. At number eight, I have the Pittsburgh Penguins with Matt Murray and Casey to Smith. Uh, Matt Murray did not have the greatest season last season with a 2.92 goals against average with a point in 907 save percentage. But I really did like what I saw from Casey to Smith last season. While Jari, I think, was the better goaltender, Smith was very solid in that backup position, putting up a 2.40 goals against average with a point 921 save percentage. I feel like Matt Murray is going to have another a solid season next season, a, a balancing back for sure. Casey to Smith, I don't see a 920 save percentage again, but I see him being a little bit less or so, but still a serviceable backup for sure. I I see this goaltending pairing possibly even getting better next season as we see Matt Murray rise once again. At number seven, I have the Dallas Stars with Ben Bishop and Anton Kudobin. Ben Bishop was solid last season, putting up 53 games played, having a 2.49 goals against average with a point a 9.16 save percentage, while Kudobin was very solid with the Boston Bruins as to Grass's backup, putting up 31 games played, having a 2.56 goals against average with a point 9.13 save percentage. And at times, Kudobin was stealing the job from Tuka Rask. He was very, very solid last season until that second half, where it kind of just kind of floated for him a little bit. But Ben Bishop was also very very solid. He was not the most consistent goaltender in the world, but overall he was a very serviceable and very solid back or very solid starter. And I feel like this next season we'll see improvements from both goaltenders as well, as we'll likely see some more consistency, at least hopefully. At number six, I have the Tampa Bay Lightning with Andre Vasilevsky and Louis Deming. Uh, Vasilevsky last season was amazing, putting up 65 games played with two six two goals against average on a point nine twenty eight percentage. He kind of fell down there in the second half. He was getting he was getting a lot of games. There was really a backup reliably last season. Uh, Louis Deming played 19 games, had a 3.41 goals against average on a point eight nine four save percentage. And while he was very very terrible in Arizona, he did get picked up I think on waivers for Tampa Bay last season and was. Very, very solid last season of the Tampa Bay Lightning. I feel like that might transition into next season. There is some question marks, but I feel like Vondra Vasilevsky can be even better next season as hopefully we see more consistency from him and he doesn't get overplayed too much. At number five, I have the Toronto Maple Leafs with Frederick Anderson and 
Garrett Sparks, Curtis McElhinney. For right now, I think that Sparks will take that backup job, so we'll set that in stone. But for Redick Anderson, he pretty much raises his bat, he pretty much raises his hand up into that elite level. He was arguably a top three goaltender last season with the Toronto Maple Leafs. He uh, put up 66 six games, played out of 2.81 goaltending average with .918 save percentage. While that isn't great on paper, still very good numbers, but not elite numbers, he was facing so many shots every single night, and it's miraculous that he even put up that much of a save percentage. For Garrett Sparks, he was fantastic in the AHL, being the AHL's best goalie tender and winning the Calder Cup throughout that run, so I think he will be ready for the NHL I feel like next season. This could be a top three tandem, especially if they keep that consistency. At number four, I have the Anaheim Ducks with John Gibson and Ryan Miller. John Gibson was absolutely elite last season, playing 60 games, having a 2.43 goals against average and a .926 save percentage, and kind of like Frederick Anderson, facing a ton of shots every single night. While Ryan, Get Ryan Miller was very good as well, putting up 28 games played, having a 2.35 goals against average and a .928 save percentage. That's very, very good. There is some question about them going into next season. I don't know if Ryan Miller is going to be quite as good. I feel like John Gibson will be, I think John Gibson will continue his elite play, but the Ducks might not be as good either, so that is something to factor in. This goal done tandem was fantastic last season, and I'm hoping that continues in the next season, but there is some questions about that. At number three, I have the Columbus Blue Jackets with Sergei Bobrovsky and Jonas Carposalo. Sergei Bobrovsky, in my opinion, is the best goaltender in the world right now. Uh, last season, he played 65 games, had 2.42 goals in average for .921 save percentage. While Corp Corp Corposalo had 18 games played up a 3.32 goals in average by .897 save percentage. I see Corposalo being very, very good, having a possibly breakout season next season. And for Bobrovsky, while there is some concerns about him staying in Columbus, I feel like for right now, he is the best goaltender in the world, and for Columbus, he is their guy. So, for right now, I feel like the goaltender tandem could get even better next season, especially if we see Zerger Robrowski stay with Columbus. At number two, I have the San Jose Sharks with Martin Jones and Aaron Dell. Martin Jones having a solid season last season with 60 games played, having a 2.55 goals against average with a .915 save percentage. Aaron Dell was fantastic in that backup role, playing 29 games, having a 2.64 goals against average and a .914 save percentage. He was among uh, Carter Hutton as one of the best backups throughout most of the season. He did drop for that second half, but he was still very, very solid. I feel both of these goaltenders being very, very good next season, of course. If you didn't watch my Vesna Trophy at Canada video, you already know that I really do like Martin Jones' chances going to next season. I think he'll be very, very good. For Aaron Dell, he's not really too old right there, and I feel like he will continue at least some of his play that he had last season on to next season. And at number one, this is pretty obvious as this goaltending tandem is just absolutely overpowered. At number one, I have the Nashville Predators with Pekka Rene, who's too good right now, and UC Soros. Pekka Rene, of course, winning the Vezina Trophy last season with the, vet, with the Nashville Predators, having 59 games played with 2.31 goals against average and a .927 save percentage. While UC Soros was amazing, putting up 26 games played, having a 2.45 goals against average and a .925 save percentage. Right now, Pekka Rene is one of the best goaltenders in the league, if not the best goaltender in the league right now. And while there is some concerns about him declining, they definitely have a fantastic fantastic backup option in UC Soros, who I think could turn into a starter next season, and as soon as next season, I feel like we can see his potential really blossom. He's already shown great things in the NHL with the Nashville Predators as a backup. I feel like he'll continue to develop as Becker Rene is likely done and retired. UC Soros will likely be the next generation of Nashville goaltending. I feel like UC Soros and Becker Rene are both going to be very, very solid at least next season, and right now, I feel like it's the best goal tandem by far. Both could be start. Both uh, one is a better winning trophy goal Center just last season, and one could be the next generation of fantastic angel goaltending. So, of course, I listed my 31 through 1, so I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about my list? What do you think about my number 1? And, of course, I want to hear from you guys. What is your list, and what are your favorite goalie tandems in the NHL? But that is right for today, guys. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure you like and subscribe again. Tell me below what are your thoughts on the video, what are your thoughts on my rankings, and what are your rankings as well. And I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.